11, The Land of the Dead. Odysseus and his crew set out for the land of the dead. They arrive and find the place to which Circe has directed them. Then I address the blurred and breathless dead, vowing to slaughter my best heifer for them before she calfed at home in Ithaca and burn the choice bits on the altar fire. As for Tiresias, I swore to sacrifice a black lamb, handsomest of all our flock. Thus, to assuage the nations of the dead, I pledged these rites, then slashed the lamb and you, letting their black blood stream into the well pit. Now, the souls gathered, stirring out of Erebus, brides and young men, and men grown old in pain, and tender girls whose hearts were new to grief. Many were there too, torn by brazen lance heads, battle slain, bearing still their bloody gear. From every side they came and sought the pit with rustling cries, and I grew sick with fear. But presently I gave command to my officers to flay those sheep, the bronze cut down, and make burnt offerings of flesh to the gods below, to sovereign death, to pale Persephone. Meanwhile, I crunched, sorry, crouched with my drawn sword to keep the surging phantoms from the bloody pit till I should know the presence of Tiresias. One shade came first, Elpenor of our company, who laid unburied still on the wide earth as we had left him, dead in Circe's hall, untouched, unmourned, when other cares compelled us. Now, when I saw him there, I wept for pity and called out to him. How is this, Elpenor? How could you journey to the western gloom swifter afoot than I in the black lugger? He sighed and answered, Son of great Laertes, Odysseus, master mariner and soldier, bad luck shadowed me, and no kindly power. Ignoble death I drank with so much wine. I slept on Circe's roof, then could not see the long, steep backward ladder coming down, and fell that height. My neck bone buckled under, snapped, and my spirit found this well of dark. Now hear the grace I pray for in the name of those back in the world, not here. Your wife and father, he who gave you bread in childhood, and your own child, your only Telemachus, long ago left at home. When you make sail and put these lodgings of dim death behind, you will moor ship, I know, upon Iia Island. There, Oh, my Lord, remember me, I pray. Do not abandon me, unwept, unburied, to tempt the gods' wrath while you sail for home. But fire my corpse and all the gear I had, and build a cairn for me above the breakers, an unknown, an unknown sailor's mark for men to come. Heap up the mound there and implant upon it the oar I pulled in life with my companions. He ceased. And I replied, unhappy spirit, I promise you the barrow and the burial. So we conversed and grimly at a distance with my long sword between guarding the blood while the faint image of the lad spoke on. Now came the soul of Anticlea dead, my mother, daughter of Autoclicus, dead now, those living still when I took ship for Holy Troy. Seeing this ghost, I grieved but held her off through pang on pang of tears till I should know the presence of Tiresias. Soon from the dark, that prince of Thebes came forward bearing a golden staff and he addressed me. Son of Laertes and the gods of old, Odysseus, master of landways and seaways, why leave the blazing sun, O man of woe, to see the cold dead and the joyless region? Stand clear. Put up your sword, let me but taste of blood, I shall speak true. At this, I stepped aside, and in the scabbard let my long sword ring home to the pommel silver, as he bent down to the somber blood. Then spoke the prince of those with gift of speech. Great captain, a fair wind and the honey lights of home are all you seek, but anguish lies ahead. The god who thunders on the land prepares it, 
not to be shaken from your trap. Implacable, in rancor for the sun whose eye you blinded. One narrow strait may take you through his blows. Denial of yourself, restraint of shipmates. When you make landfall on Thernatia first and quit the violet sea, dark on the land you'll find the grazing herds of Helios by whom all things are seen, all speech is known. Avoid those kind, hold fast to your intent, and hard seafaring brings you all to Ithaca. But if you raid the beeves, I see destruction for ship and crew. Though you survive alone, bereft of all companions, lost for years, under strange sail shall you come home to find your own house filled with trouble. Insolent men eating your livestock as they court your lady. Aye, you shall make those men atone in blood. But after you have dealt out death in open combat or by stealth to all the suitors, go over land on foot and take an oar until one day you come to where men have lived with meat unsalted, never known the sea, nor seen seagoing ships with crimson bows and oars that fledge light hulls for dipping flight. The spot will soon be plain to you, and I can tell you how. Some passerby will say, what winnowing fan is that upon your shoulder? Halt, and implant your smooth oar in the turf and make fair sacrifice to Lord Poseidon. A ram, a bull, a great buck boar. Turn back and carry out pure hecatombs at home to all wide heaven's lords, the undying gods to each in order. Then a seaborne death, soft as this hand of mist will come upon you when you are wearied out with rich old age, your country folk in blessed peace around you, and all this shall be just as I foretell. Odysseus speaks to the shade of his mother. She tells him that Penelope and Telemachus are still grieving for him and that his father, Laertes, has moved to the country where he too mourns his son. Odysseus's mother explains that she died from a broken heart. Odysseus also speaks with the spirits of many great ladies and men who died, as well as those who were being punished for their earthly sins, filled with horror, Odysseus and his crew set sail.